By the mid-1920s, it was obvious, from the photoelectric effect, the Compton effect, and in other ways, that when light interacts with matter, it does so as if it were made of tiny bullets of energy called photons. The rest of the time, it goes about as if it were smeared out in the form of a wave. Apparently, light had an identity crisis, and nowhere was that crisis more evident than in an updated version of an experiment carried out long before quantum theory came on the scene. Thomas Young's double-slit experiment dating back to the early 19th century offers the clearest, most unambiguous proof of the wave-like personality of light. On the screen at the rear of the apparatus appears a series of alternating bright and dark bands. Two waves from a common source, one rippling out from each slit, combine, and the stripes on the screen speak unarguably of the Adigan cancelling out of wave crests and troughs. What happens now if we dim the light source? A 60 watt light bulb puts out roughly 150 million trillion photons a second. This vast number underscores why quantum effects which expose the discreteness of energy go unnoticed at the everyday level. The individual energy transactions involved are fantastically small. If we want to pursue the question of how light really behaves on a tiny scale, we have to turn the lamp in Young's experiment down, way down. This was first done in 1909 by the English physicist and engineer Geoffrey Taylor. Shortly after his graduation from Cambridge, Taylor set up a version of Young's experiment using a light source so feeble that it was equivalent, he said, to a candle burning at a distance slightly exceeding a mile. Even at this level of illumination, the interference pattern showed up. The dribble of light passing through the apparatus continued to behave in a wave-like manner. What if the light source were turned down even further? What if it were dimmed so much that it effectively spat out single photons? There was no way to arrange for this to happen in the early 20th century. The technology needed just wasn't at hand. Fashioning a light source that emits only one photon at a time isn't as simple as turning on a faucet so that water comes out drip by drip. After all, each water droplet contains many trillions of atoms, each of which is more substantial than a photon. Consequently, those involved in the formative phase of quantum physics, like those grappling with early relativity theory, had to rely on thought experiments to test their ideas. If Young's experiment could be done using a light source that fired out individual photons, what would be seen on the screen? The only answer that squared both with experiments that had been carried out and with the emerging principles of quantum theory is that the interference pattern would build up one point at a time. This ought to happen even if there were no more than a single photon passing through the apparatus at a given moment. As the English theoretical physicist Paul Dirac put it, each photon then interferes only with itself. Today, double-slit experiments with individual photons are routinely set up as demonstrations for undergraduates. Single tiny flashes of light are captured live, and the characteristic double-slit interference pattern can be watched building up in real time. The familiar bright and dark bands which cry out for a wave interpretation emerge like a pointillistic painting from the specks that are obviously the marks of individual colliding particles. Something very strange is going on here. In the single photon double slit experiment, each photon starts and ends its journey as a particle. Yet in between it behaves as if it were a wave that had passed through both slits because that's the only way to account for the interference pattern that forms over time. During its flight from source to detector, the photon acts in a way that defies not only common sense, but all of physics before Planck and Einstein. You might say, 
Let's keep closer tabs on each photon in the experiment. If it's a particle, a single point-like entity, it can't really go through both slits at once any more than a person can simultaneously walk through two doorways. What happens if we put a detector on one of the slits to tell us whether the photon goes through that slit or the other? This is easy to arrange and, sure enough, the photon is forced to give itself up. By posting a sentry at one of these slits, we learn which slit each photon passes through. But in gaining this knowledge, we lose something else. The interference pattern. Flushed into the open, compelled in mid-flight to reveal its whereabouts, the photon abruptly abandons its wave-like behavior and acts purely and simply like a miniature bullet bound on a straight-line trajectory. Somehow, the existence of the interference pattern is tied to a lack of knowledge as to which slit the photons actually went through. If we don't ask where the photon is, it behaves like a wave. If we insist upon knowing, it behaves like a particle. In classical physics, such a situation would be unthinkable, yet there it is. The act of observing light makes its wave nature instantly collapse and its particle aspect becomes manifest at a specific point in space and time. It's almost as if a photon knows when it's being watched and alters its behavior accordingly. Evidently, an enigma lies at the heart of the quantum world that, like a Zen koan, resists a solution in familiar, everyday terms. <laughs>